Blue cheese comes in a variety of styles with textures that range from creamy to crumbly and flavors that go from mild to absolutely pungent. And today, Jack's gonna walk us through all the options. Yeah, we have a little bit of everything here on the table. I just have to ask, do you love blue cheese as much as I do? <laughs> now you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I love blue cheese. I grew up loving it. But I really don't know a lot about the different brands. I just kind of grab one and go. All right, so I've got four really interesting samples. We actually tasted 14 blue cheeses, That's and I brought a representative sample. I want to hear what you're liking, why you're liking it, and if you have any thoughts about what specific blue cheese that you're tasting. Mm -hmm. well, All the, right. Everything here on the table is a winner. Oh, so, that, so that's why I'm upping the ante a little I bit see. here. So while you're digging in, let me explain to you why blue cheese is such a big category compared to like Parmesans or cheddar. And it's not to say that there aren't variations within those categories, but blue cheese, first of all, you can use any kind of milk. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be cow's milk, goat's milk, sheep's milk. Most of it's cow's milk, but sheep and goat make their appearances. They can be aged a couple weeks or they can be aged for a year. The molds are all the same. So people think, oh, they're using different molds. They're different strains, but the big thing is how they inject oxygen into the wheels of the cheese. Hmm. So they make the cheese like any other cheese. They add mold, they form around, and then the mold needs oxygen to do its thing. So they have a metal tube mm -hmm. that they use to basically cut out parts of the cheese and provide channels for oxygen to get in there. And when they do that, how they do that, how often they do that, what size those holes are, can all determine the ribboning, like where does that mold go, how much mold you get. The other thing is the aging. It starts usually in a warm, moist environment and then goes cooler and drier, often into a cave. And so rather than a single aging environment, it has multiple. <laughs> Ooh, I might have taken too big of a bite of that one, but that one is an open the window kind of pungent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been telling you all about blue cheeses. You've been tasting. Mm. I'll let you get a first pass. We, we, I think we know mm. what you think about that last sample. I like it. It's very creamy. It's very strong, but it has little crystals in it, which are fun. This one, I could eat this all day. It has a lovely texture. It melts in your mouth, but it has nuances of flavor. It reminds me of Parmesan. reminds me of Gruyere. It tastes a bit aged. The blue isn't as prominent as some of these other aging flavors, which I love. This one is like blue cheese met brie and had a baby, and I love it. Like this spread onto a good baguette would be amazing. They're three different cheeses, mm. and they're really different from each other, aren't they? Really different. I would use these for very different things, I think. And this one, when you think of blue cheese, this is what you think of. It's a little crumbly, but you could spread it on something. It would make a great salad dressing. Do you have a favorite on the table? This one. I could eat this all day long. I don't think I've ever had a blue cheese that tasted like this, which might be why I'm so interested in it, because oh, you're like, oh, you don't think you have. Well, no, I feel very excited. Yeah. I, I, I brought something new for you. Yeah, no, this one, I really just enjoy all the nuances and flavor, but I really could eat any of these any, any day of the week. Any sense of what any of these are? I thought I was going to be like, oh, this tastes like Roquefort, and this tastes like Gorgonzola. I think this might be Gorgonzola, because it's very soft, but that's about all I got. Okay, well... Why don't we start here then? All right. Well, that would be the gorgonzola. Well, that's the gorgonzola, <laughs> which is also soft. That's what I think about gorgonzola, and that's, but it's not as potent as I thought a gorgonzola would be. So this is a dolce. I wondered, okay. Not a picante. When you said, if blue cheese and brie, brie had a baby, yes. I thought that's a very good way of describing a creamy, lightly aged, I would call this a sort of beginner-ish mm -hmm. blue cheese. It's not super aggressive, it's very friendly. Yeah, it'd be great on a bigger cheese plate when you have a bunch of people coming, because like you said, it's good for beginners and everyone would like it. Yeah, let's get down to the end. All right. So this is the Roquefort. Oh, oh. right, right, Roquefort. Yeah. yeah, so those crystals mm -hmm. are actually, because it's aged a really long time, it's the same process, it's similar to like what happens to Parmesan. And that's one of the hallmarks of Roquefort is you get a little bit of that crystalline texture, which is Wonderful. Yes, it's really nice. Okay, now for my all-time favorite. So this is wow. a Stilton. Um, oh, right. And I think the best description from tasters was fudgy. <laughs> well, because it, it's super, it, like this is creamy, the gorgonzola, but it's like, it mm. is so creamy that it's almost fudgy. Mm -hmm. And the milk is just absolutely divine. I think it's getting a little bit of yellow because there must have been a lot of grass that the cows were eating before that cheese was made. Uh, all right, last but definitely not least in uh, so my book. I wanted to put an American cheese. Maytag. This is Maytag. I forgot all about Maytag. Yeah, and it's a heritage cheese. It's from the Midwest. I would say it's sort of average blue cheese, not super mild, not super funky, mm -hmm. just delicious. Just delicious. Jack, thank you. This is a really interesting tasting. You're welcome.
So there you have it. In the world of blue cheese, there is something for everybody. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.